uh, the Ohio Department of Public Safety is roughly 50,000 in the Dayton area without power, and statewide over 70,000, which, as I understand, it, includes uh, Salina, but also uh, some areas north of Columbus. So about 50,000 people in this area are not able to get power right now. Talk about yeah, if you see wires on the ground, if you're not a professional and know what you're doing, stay away from them. Don't go up there, try to kick them. Oh, let's move this out of the way with your hands or whatever. Don't touch them. When you look around, what's your thoughts? Uh, devastation. World War Three. It's tough. Have you, have you been a part of anything like this before? No. No, my first. What was here? We got family. Uh, this was a family dollar. Uh, this was a men's club over here. A lot of different businesses right here. Um, the township is a, big, a, a mix of, a, of, of, we have about 22,000 residents, and we have over 1,500 businesses here in the township. So we have a lot of business here. Uh, and a lot of it got devastated last night. So it's going to be a long time coming back. Chair, you talk a lot about Well, well, we're going to prosecute them uh, with, with every ounce energy we have. Uh, we're already, one of the things we're doing is we're setting up the security teams now. Uh, we're going to do everything we can to protect our, our, our residents' businesses. Uh, you know, they, they, they live here, they work here, we all shop here. Uh, so that's one of our main priorities now. Finding people, getting them safe was, was number one. Now we're going to go to protecting people's property. And if we find somebody inside somebody's business, inside somebody's home stealing, um, they're going to go to my jail and then they're going to be prosecuted. I can't elaborate on that right now. I'm not sure. What's next? Where do you go from here? Uh, where do we go from here? Um, making everything safe. We've got the Montgomery County Building Department out here assessing buildings, and they're going to take a look. We ha they have several engineers on, on staff. They will take a look at all the buildings that were damaged. And if you have an issue at your home and you're a little bit worried, call the Montgomery County Building Department, and their, their phone number is located in the inter, on the Internet. It's a 225 number. I'm sorry I don't have that number for you right now. But uh, they have engineers on site, and we'll send them to your house to see if it is safe to occupy. But it's going to be several years of rebuilding, I'm sure. Uh, they closed at 5 p.m. yesterday, but we did a, we did a complete search anyways. You never know. There could have been a cleaning person in there, somebody hanging over after shift. We still searched. No, they closed at 5 p.m. Okay. By that time of the night, they would have been all closed at 11 p.m. Yes, uh, uh, the uh, the local USAR team has. You have been listening to a news conference underway there in Harrison Township. One thing that we do want to make clear that you heard several times from Senator Portman and from Sheriff Streck that there were no fatalities. To be clear, there were no fatalities reported in Montgomery County, but WHIO has confirmed that there has been at least one fatality there in Mercer County in the Salina area. Now you heard Sheriff Rob Streck talking about the damage left behind by last night's tornadoes at this news conference. He said that he is grateful to the first responders and now there are rescue crews searching buildings, many homes and businesses reduced to rubble. We saw stores and homes ripped apart by the storm. Fortunately, no one was killed in Montgomery County and no one has been seriously injured according to their last reports. Now, deputies and police say they are protecting businesses and homes right now from looters trying to secure the areas that have been reduced to rubble. Yeah, and Sheriff Streck said if he finds you in a business or a home stealing, he has a place for you and yeah. that would be his jail and then they are going to prosecute 
execute. So that is the reality. Uh, law enforcement keeping a very close eye. WHIO's Team 7 weather coverage, of course, continues now. Five minutes after 11, we want to get straight to Gabrielle Enright. She's in Beaver Creek outside of the fire department. And Gabrielle, I know about 10 or 15 minutes ago, you said you were getting ready to get an update. I was, and I did. WHI has been able to confirm no fatalities here in Greene County either. Uh, three minor injuries is what the deputy chief told me just moments ago, and one was somebody that tripped and fell. The other are two foot injuries. One thing I can show you here is the bay door is pretty much empty. That is because of the fire department. Many of the members, they are not only out on runs, they have been consistently out on runs all morning long. We now know that more than 20 people, approximately 21, were taken to shelters. Uh, Set up by the Red Cross. We know they made almost 20 rescues or nearly 20 rescues. Uh, that's what WHIO can confirm. And I want to show you this because this is something that is representing what has happened to the fire department. This is an engine from Station 3 on Kemp Road. Uh, also, there is a medic that if D'Angelo just swings down, he can show you. You see the back of it. What you don't see is the front of it. It looks very much like this engine. There's also another engine. It, too, has some damage. These apparatus, this apparatus was inside bay doors inside the firehouse, protected, or so they thought, when the bay doors caught wind, swung in, and smashed the windshields. Now, two of the uh, apparatus, this engine and also the medic, they've been taken out of service until the glass can get fixed. That reserve engine is uh, now out and about on the streets. One thing I can tell you, WHIO can just confirm that the engine house on Kemp Road is being taken out of service for about a week because of the damage done to the bay doors. Uh, they have to be able to secure that and keep their engines and everybody else inside safe. I can also tell you that there were five people inside that firehouse five firefighters they are all okay I was able to find out more about that they said that as soon as this happened they obviously ended up going out and helping others so now that we know they're okay now they are starting to look at that firehouse and they are still going out on runs uh, when I talked with them about some of the rescues they say that most of the rescues that were made were from people that were stuck inside their homes they had tree limbs on top of their homes or they just simply were not able to get out on their own. So again, three minor injuries here in Beaver Creek. I'm going to be going to another location and we will be live with you again at noon. We'll be showing you more damage and more of what the city officials as well as the public officials, police and fire are doing here to keep everyone in this community safe. Reporting live in Beaver Creek, Gabrielle Enright, New Center 7. And Gabrielle, we will be checking back in shortly. Thank you. Uh, we do want to mention we just left that press conference in Harrison Township with Sheriff Streck from Montgomery County. There will also be another update from the city of Dayton. Officials there at City Hall plan to give us another press briefing and an update uh, at City Hall at 1130 this morning. And of course, WHIO crews will be there. Yeah. In the meantime, Kirsty, what, what do you have for us? Well, I wanted to talk a little bit more because a lot of people are just wondering, we've had so much damage, what does this mean? Yeah. Of course, the National Weather Service is going to be very busy, so I'm just offering a little bit of what we are able to show you using our Sky 7 drone and what the criteria is that the National Weather Service will look at when they're doing this analyzation of these uh, severe thunderstorms and of the areas that were devastated by these tornadoes. So you can see we crossed over I-75 in this video from our Sky 7 drone, and then we move into uh, more of a development where you see a little bit more residential uh, and you can see that the, some homes are almost completely destroyed others are still standing so seeing those clusters of damage that's indicative of tornado uh, of course damage and the varying levels of damage are also very important so I'm gonna walk on over here to the wall we'll talk a little bit more about that I pulled this graphic in a little closer so we could kind of go through these photos a little bit closer as well EF1 damage we're talking about minor so we're seeing uh, maybe a tree that was snapped a little bit of shingle damage to a home but when you start to see that a little bit more significant so you can see the roof damage is a little bit more as you start to hit into EF1 tornadoes or mobile homes are starting 
starting to sustain more damage. EF2, you're starting to receive considerable damage. So the roof of that home there looks a lot worse, and you're starting to see more buildings that can sustain worse. Once you get into three and four for the EF ratings, uh, you can see just how much this standalone building had dealt with the damage. You can see how this uh, the stories of this home were dealing with uh, the major damage. And then looking at an EF4 tornado there, the photo on the left for you, uh, older trees that have well-established roots are completely destroyed. You see the cars are able to be thrown about. And then that building itself has sustained major, major damage. And that would be a large building. So we have seen damage similar to uh, likely what's falling anywhere from EF2 to possibly higher end of EF3 damage. Again, this is not official. The National Weather Service will be very busy. They issued 36 tornado warnings between the Miami Valley and the rest of the state yesterday. Um, that is a lot. And when it comes to the damage here zooming out, you can see the areas that we're most concerned with. That's where all those reports of tornadoes were coming in southern Miami County, north uh, western Preble, through Montgomery County, and into northern Green. And then up in the northern half of the Miami Valley, Mercer and Allglaze County had those reports as well. Big picture for you. Everyone is waking up to at least dry weather for now. And I don't expect there to be widespread storms like what we had last night, but we will see some thunderstorms. We also had a ton of rainfall. We had flash flood warnings for Miami, Montgomery, Green, and Clark County last night. Look how high the Great Miami River is right now. So that is just the beginning. It oftentimes takes a day or two uh, for the full effect of flooding before we could see a river peak and then begin to retreat. And so unfortunately, uh, we're also seeing a little bit more of a secondary threat, which comes from flooding for people that live near creeks and streams. It's 80 degrees right now. We are hot. We are humid. So as people are cleaning up and taking a look at the damage in their home, maybe they can't go back into their homes. We're going to have to deal with the heat as another problem for the day today. With those thunderstorms starting to redevelop northern Miami Valley around 4 o'clock, lasting into the evening, and the heat index being a factor for pretty much everyone in the upper 80s to 90 degrees. That's how hot it's going to feel as we head towards 4 or 5 o'clock. Not much improvement tonight. So that slight risk here, that is for the northern half of the state. It does encompass some of the northern Miami Valley like Mercer, Allglaze, and Logan counties. I don't expect it to be a repeat of what happened last night by any means, but we do still have a boundary that's going to be drifting south today and that's going to start to trigger a few of these isolated thunderstorms. Not as widespread, but again, they're coming in right for late afternoon. They're right around in the evening hours, and then they really don't fizzle out until we head through the overnight. So kind of watching more of an isolated coverage, especially if you're north of the Dayton area where we have the threat for one or two of those storms to strengthen and become severe. So you do want to make sure that you're able to keep yourself tuned into the forecast, however way that's possible. If you still don't have power late this afternoon or tonight, you know, make sure you've got your phone, your WHO weather app. You could also stream us live as we continue this coverage with you throughout the day and into the night. And for Wednesday, again, we're focusing in on another threat for severe weather. This looks a little bit more widespread. So unfortunately, I wish we had dry conditions for the next several days, but we do not. We do have to watch, especially as we're dealing with this very warm, muggy air mass that's over us. Wednesday, watching some storms develop in the afternoon, but really honing in, I think, on Wednesday evening into early Thursday morning for another threat of scattered storms that, again, could become severe. So we definitely have a lot to talk about, even as we forecast out to the future for you and then continue to show you the damage as the Miami Valley continues to repair its Itself and, and kind of assess what just happened. Kirstie, thank you. We're getting all kinds of updates. We uh, have been at a news conference in Harrison Township, and we are expecting city officials in the city of Dayton to give us an update as well in about 15 minutes or so, and we will carry that update live. Yeah, Letitia, as you mentioned there in Harrison Township, moments ago, Montgomery County Sheriff Rob Streck, Senator Rob Portman, as well as Chief Mark Lynch from the Harrison Township Fire Department, all giving us updates on, right in front of one of the worst scenes there in that township. New Center 7's Mike Campbell continues our Team 7 weather coverage. Mike, I know you were there for that live news conference, and I know you're seeing all of that damage right now.
Yes, Adam, this is the, the called the North Plaza Shopping Center. It's just off North Dixie, just a little bit north of the Wagner Ford traffic circle. And we did show you some aerials of this this morning, but I just wanted to show you, you know, this back corner of the shopping center right here. We have three or four businesses where the roof has completely collapsed in the back. And then you come over to the Jackson Hewitt uh, business. They also are collapsed. 2,000 nails, and then over to a Metro PCS. And, of course, this is the family dollar we've been talking about through the morning, showing you aerials. But as you look into the building, you can see it is just a mess. The roof is completely gone, but even the, the uh, superstructure of the building's ceiling and, you know, the drop ceilings for us, the store are all completely gone. The insulation just hanging. In fact, while we were doing this news conference, I don't know if you could see that while we were live, but while we were doing the news conference, there were still pieces of insulation and ceiling tiles that continued to to drop as Sheriff Streck, Chief Lynch, and Senator Portman were talking. You could still see things dropping in the background the entire time through that 15-minute news conference. Also in this North Park shopping plaza, we're going to come over here a little bit further, there is a uh, gentleman's club that's called the Living Room. You can see that it is completely to the ground and as you can also probably hear, uh, the uh, alarms are continuing to go off in that building. The interesting thing is, of course, there is no power in this area, but that alarm is apparently battery-powered or hardwired to it, an energy source somehow where it continues to sound. And they tried to cut that off for the news conference, could not, so they went ahead and... Uh, decided to go ahead with the news conference anyway. Now you're taking a look. I think you were just looking at the side of the Family Dollar store here with all of the walls and the bricks completely down. We can move over here and you can see uh, this whole front concrete facade is down. And then towards the back, you see there's still a wall there, but probably not structurally sound. During the news conference, Chief Mark Lynch from the Harrison Township Fire Department said that Montgomery County building inspectors are here. And of course, they'll be checking buildings, but they through Harrison Township, one of the hardest hit areas in our area, there are all kinds of buildings and homes to be checked. <coughs> now, also in this parking lot, the Montgomery County Sheriff has set up a mobile command center. You can see their van right here behind me, and they do have a couple of uh, urban search and rescue teams here that have been on the scene this morning as well. In fact, just before we came on the air, we saw a couple uh, of those search and rescue teams going into this building, going into the Family Dollar, uh, just double-checking again with dogs to make sure there's no one uh, around, no one that was trapped in here. Now, the good news was that these businesses were closed because of Memorial Day yesterday. Yesterday, but the concern was that there might be security people here, there might be overnight cleaning crews here that were trapped when the tornado came through, so they wanted to make sure. So far, they have not found any victims here. We also asked the uh, fire chief whether they had any injuries or serious injuries to the township because they did have to make some rescue and pull some people out of homes. They, he said there were some minor injuries, is how he described them, people that did get hurt by debris or just trying to get out of their homes. But in Harrison Township anyway, about 2,000 people, they do not have any injuries, which is kind of surprising given how, many, uh, how much damage we're seeing here. We've seen some homes with equal amounts of damage. We have also seen... Uh, a little bit further up north Dixie, there are power lines that are completely down in power poles that have been snapped into like twigs, like a matchstick, which uh, shows you just how strong this tornado that came through here is. Now, one other thing I wanted to just emphasize as we continue to talk through here and talk about how these businesses obviously are on, <coughs> excuse me, are on the ground. The sheriff was saying once they know everyone is safe, once they've made sure that they've got the gas leak shut down and those type of things, they will then make sure that they pivot to protecting property like this or protecting homes. And the sheriff was emphasizing that if he finds people that are trying to take advantage of people, prey on people in a bad situation, his deputies will not only be arresting them, but they won't be getting a summons, they won't be getting a ticket, they will be getting locked up. He's putting that warning out there to anyone that would uh, think about trying to take advantage of businesses or homes uh, as the cleanup begins over the next hours and days. Now, the other thing that the uh, fire chief said to us during this news conference was that they mostly have most of the live wires down, but there are still some live wires in the township. He's asking everybody that sees wires like this one down on the ground to go ahead and treat them 
like they're a live wire. In other words, just make sure you stay away from them. Let the professionals handle that. Uh, of course, DPNL has their hands full through all of this all across the Miami Valley, but they want to make sure that people stay away from wires, treat them as if they're live, until they know the professionals have come in and made sure they're not. Now, we are going to continue to stay here, join you again at noon with an update on what was said here and some of the other damage we're seeing in the area. But for now, reporting live in Harrison Township, I'm Mike Campbell. Let's go back to Adam and Letitia. Mike, before you go, I do want to mention, um, actually, that we were told that there's heavy traffic in that area from people just wanting to stop by and take pictures. The sheriff said that moments ago. Is that something you're seeing? That is something we saw on our way here. Adam, we left from Riverside. Uh, trying to get here at 1045. We left at 10, ordinarily a trip that might have taken us 10 minutes. We didn't get here till about 1050. That's how long it took. There, uh, the roads are like bumper to bumper in the uh, Riverside, Dayton, Harrison Township area. Some of that is because traffic lights are out because of lack of power, but some of it is also because, uh, as the sheriff said, people are coming in and almost sightseeing at the damage. And he said, yeah. if you don't live here, if you don't have to be here, he's asking you to stay away. First responders need to be able to have room to do their job. They need to be able to move their vehicles back and forth to wherever the trouble spots are. He's asking anyone that does not live in this area to stay away so that first responders and other crews, power crews, utilities crews can do their job and try and start the process of cleaning up and then reconnecting everyone that is without power right now. All right, Mike, thank you. That's Mike Campbell in Harrison Township. He just attended a news conference uh, that was held by Montgomery County Sheriff Rob Streck and others in that area assessing the damage, giving us an update. And we did want to mention that while there have been no fatalities in Montgomery County, according to the sheriff, there, WHIO has confirmed that there is at least one fatality in Mercer County. We have several crews in that area getting updates as well. And and then within about 10 minutes or so, we are expecting an update from City Hall in Dayton, in downtown Dayton, from city officials there. They did have at least one news briefing earlier this morning. We carried that live. We also carried that news conference live from Harrison Township just a few moments ago. And we will continue to carry any updates that we can live for you here on air. WHIO does have a crew there at City Hall in Dayton, and we are expecting an update there momentarily. In the meantime, you're looking at video from the Trotwood area uh, of damage that we collected from Sky 7. This is WHIO's Sky 7 drone uh, showing the damage there as we cross I-75 and WHIO again sending the drone into neighborhoods showing uh, damage in those areas as well. A, a, pr a pretty important update here if you're just joining us at 1122 as New Center 7 continues to have wall-to-wall -wall coverage. Dayton Children's Hospital now reporting that they are running on generator power. So what that means is any elective surgeries are not going to happen. So of course we would suggest you call Dayton Children's if you have an elective surgery and make sure of this. But again, we are now getting word here in our New Center 7 newsroom room and out here uh, Dayton Children's Hospital on generator power and what they're doing at this moment is canceling elective surgery so if you have a child that uh, is going to have surgery that is not mandatory and it is elective uh, at Dayton Children's Hospital there's a really good chance that is not going to happen today again all of this because of power outages that we've been seeing across the Miami Valley this a look here in Trotwood Hera Arena once the Sun came up Letitia I know you were devastated once we saw how much damage actually took place there uh, in the city of Trotwood. But I'm thankful that that business has been closed for quite a while now, so that meant that no people were actually in there. And when you look at the damage there, it's just amazing. Uh, again, we've been in contact with the Trotwood mayor, Mary McDonald, throughout the morning. She's been talking about how the Red Cross set up a shelter at the high school, but then had to close it and move those residents elsewhere. She talked about how um, there are several school buses making their way around city streets in Trotwood trying to look for residents to get them to shelter safely. We did speak with some Dayton res or Dayton officials earlier this morning as well and they tell WHIO that RTA buses have been offering their services to get residents to safe spots. We are expecting an update from the city of Dayton. WHIO has a crew there at City Hall and will be bringing that to you as well live. And to put that update in perspective, 
perspective, as we heard an update earlier from Dayton City Hall, we heard from Dayton's mayor, we heard from Dayton City Manager, we heard from the fire chief and the police chief. We were told at that moment that uh, they've received more than 250 calls. We're talking about the Dayton Police Department. More than 250 calls since 11 so on last night. And at the moment of this morning, so about three hours ago, when they gave us that update, they had more than 70 police officers. And remember, this is after a very long holiday weekend with the hate group that was in town on Saturday. Many of those officers were stretched thin then as well. And now once again, now when the police chief was asked about this, he essentially the same thing as Montgomery County Sheriff Rob Streck. They said, this is what they chose to do. And when the public needs them, they will be there. We're seeing that from both our sheriff's department and our police uh, sheriff's office and our police department, as well as our first responders around the Miami Valley. Community helping community. We yeah. also spoke with a deep PNL spokesperson several times this morning. She told WHIO that they are part of a network, so when other parts of the country are in trouble, Dayton Power and Light Crews head that way to help. And now they are summon summonsing crews from around the country to come in, mutual aid as they call it, a part of a mutual aid network to come into the Miami Valley and help restore service here. Also talking about that team effort, uh, Senator Rob Portman and Montgomery County Sheriff Rob Streck mentioned in their news conference that talk about that collective effort they have search and rescue teams urban search and rescue teams from around the state here helping to go through those buildings and make sure that no one is stuck inside they are coming from Cincinnati from Columbus and we're using our own as well uh, WHIO has learned from crews from the Dayton area speaking of the state level Ohio governor Mike DeWine making his way to Salina right now of course uh, New Center 7's John Bedell is there. He will be with the governor as that happens. Also, as you mentioned, Senator Rob Portman chimed in on federal help. Mm -hmm. So uh, the city of Dayton, the Mo uh, Montgomery County will receive not only state help, but Rob Portman said he would also, Senator Portman rather, said he would also like to expedite mm -hmm. federal help to hopefully get that help here as soon as we can. He's talking about not only business owners, but also individuals. So Hopefully they can either rebuild or fix their home and get back in it as soon as possible and life can move on. But as he mentioned, it's going to take years to rebuild what we knew yeah. that once stood just, you know, 12, 24 hours ago and now all but destroyed. That includes mobile home parks like this one. That includes yeah. homes all over the Miami Valley. That includes several businesses that we've been taking a look at over the past 12 hours. Uh, the good news is, as Sheriff Strzok said from Montgomery County, there are no fatalities reported thus far in Montgomery County. However, WHIO has confirmed that at least one fatality has been confirmed in Mercer County, there in the Salina area. You mentioned John Bedell headed that way. Also, we have our own Jim Adi, who is also headed to Salina yeah. to continue our Team 7 weather coverage. All of this tornadic activity actually started to fire up a little after 9 last night. Of course, Storm Center 7 Chief Meteorologist McCall Vrydegs was all over it. That is when we went on air and we have been on air literally since then. I swapped out uh, equipment and microphones with Cheryl uh, this morning at about 2.15. Letitia, you were already sitting here on this desk. Kirsty had been here as well. And we continue our Team 7 weather coverage. News Center 7 uh, has a team of reporters around the community. WHIO also has just learned the Dayton Children's Hospital. If you're just joining us, they are now on generator power. This is a pretty big update. Yes. So Dayton Children's Hospital on generator power and apparently what they're doing is they are canceling elective surgery. So if you have a child that has a surgery at Dayton Children's today, be sure to call that hospital and make sure uh, that that surgery is still happening because the chances are it is not. And this is why, my goodness, take a look at Sky 7 here. This is where Mike Campbell just was in Harrison Township moments ago. This is what it looked like before that news conference. And again, you see what used to be a strip mall full of booming businesses. It, back up 12, you know, 16, 20, 24 hours, and it was a sunny day. Everyone's enjoying the holiday. People are grilling out. People are running around. Many people enjoying a day off from work.